Hey everyone, thanks for returning. This is Daniel the Paladin here from Christian Adventure Gamer. Uh, we are having a contest. If you are new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the link below. Uh, if we can get to 200 subscribers, we're going to have a giveaway. We're going to give away one $25 gift certificate to either Miniature Market, Cool Stuff Inc., or the War Store. And I'm going to have subscribers vote on this. So if you can comment below, I do keep track of the comments, and we'll pick out which gift certificate we're going to give. We're only going to give away one, and so it does determine on what the subscribers say. And please do not hide your YouTube subscriptions. Uh, that way you can be notified and seen in the drawing. I mean, the, if you hide your, your user and we go to have the drawing, it says I have 200 users, but your identity or your user ID is not on the list, I can't enter you into the drawing because I don't know who you are. And so that's an important piece. Also, if we can get to 500 subscribers, we're going to have another giveaway. And if we can get to 1,000 subscribers, we're going to have another giveaway. And things are just going to get better and better. What you can expect from this channel is game reviews, painting. We're going to do some reviews based on mental health and Christian family orientation, family engagement. Uh, that's the kind of stuff you can look at. And today's view, we're going to take a look at Clumsy Witch. This is a game by Haba. It's from ages 5 and up. And I think that's pretty accurate. It's for two to four players. And on the box here, it says that it actually is designed for control, feelings, and impulses, help develop concentration, and improve retentiveness. Uh, fit to learn effects is uh, supporting executive functions. Well, let's take it to the table and take a look. Alright, now that we got the game all set up, the way this game is played is that you will take these dice, you can start with one or you can start with all of them. I usually do one dice at a time and then I advance them because they each mean something different. So I'll start with this purple die since it has numbers on it, that's the number of movements. And so the way you play this game is that you first have to instruct the kid that they cannot touch any of the objects. And so you would go like this, shake it up in here, and then put it down, and then you reveal it, and there's a saying you have to say. And so it says four. But you go one, two, three, four, five, six, fex. It seems as if the witch is vexed. What is missing from her brew? Count the dots. The die will tell you. And then you cover the die. And then the kid, without touching clumsy witch here, or without touching any of these, has to use their eyes and their brain to figure out where she's going to move and then figure out what's missing from the pot that's in front of her and she always moves this way and if you notice there's nothing on the back so that's her backside so this means this is where she's facing so let's start there and then using my skills I'll go one two three four and figure out what's missing and these little tokens here are all the all the ingredients that are actually in the pot but it's missing one of those ingredients and so I can see that it is actually missing a worm. Because I see a worm here, but I do not see a worm here. So I say a worm. I can grab the token, or I can just leave it there and say worm. And so then I reveal it to the child. Then I go one, two, three, four. But you know what? I counted wrong. I accidentally counted five. And so. I would not get one of these little potion tokens because I was wrong because I see a worm right here. And so then the next person would go and the person before them would say that saying again. So now this dice says six and you go one, two, three, four, five, six, fex. It seems as if the witch is vexed. What is missing from her brew? Count the dots. The die will tell you. Now I can actually find the sixth space. And it is the banana peel. And so then I'll reveal the die, because the person said banana peel. And I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then flip this over. And it was the banana peel, as you can see. And so then you flip that back over, and then you'd give that person one of the little potions. 
Okay, after they get this down, sometimes to help them preventing from cheating, because as I'm doing the little saying, if they're looking at the die, then they start going ahead and counting the spaces right away. I'll move her off the board, roll the die, and so, so it says five, then I'll do the little saying, one, two, three, four, five, six, vexed. It seems as if the witch is vexed. What is missing from her brew? Count the dots, the die will tell you. And then I'll cover it, then I'll put her somewhere. So that way now they have to remember what that die was. And every time I go to another die, I go ahead and reshuffle all these little discs and place them. So next, I might use this die here, the green die, or this blue die. The green die, so let's say she's here. If you roll a white, she continues going the correct way. If you roll the yellow die, then she has to go in reverse. And so if you roll both of these dice, and let's say you reveal a three and a yellow, and then you do your little saying, cover it, and then they have to figure out which way she's going to go. They have to remember that it was a yellow arrow and that she actually walked backwards. So one, two, three, it would put her here and not one, two, three here. Okay, and then this die, if you look here, there's a face symbol on it. That's the way the witch is facing. And then the hat is what is behind her. And so let's say I didn't play with this die, but I play with this one. So I roll it, do the little saying, Okay, and then you have three and then the hat. So she'd go one, two, three. Instead of looking what's in front of her, she'd be looking at what's behind her in this pot. And then you can play with all three of them, and it starts to get a little more trickier. So then you see that she's going to look forward, move two spaces in the forward direction. But if it was this and this, it'd be two spaces back, and she would have to look what's behind her. Okay, and then you have this die here. This brings in another wizard or musician. This is Fex. So the, like, the style of the game is called Fit to Learn Fex. So this is Fex. And if you notice, he has a moon on his wand. So the moon represents him. And if you notice, her wand has a star. And so then there's the star to represent her. And so he does the exact opposite of Clumsy Witch. So let's say she goes here. And you can put him anywhere. So I put him here, but he faces the opposite direction. And he moves this way. Okay, and so on this symbol here, the yellow die, or the yellow arrow, <clears throat> he would move, he would move this way. As the white, instead of like where she would have to move this way on yellow, because that's the opposite. Then on the white, she would move this way, but for him, he would move this way. Okay, and then on this die, the rules are kind of weird on this die. I think there was a, a problem with the translation. It says that if you reveal this symbol, it's what's behind him. But if you reveal this symbol, it's what's in front of her. Uh, and so if you're moving him around and you have to look what's in front of her, that makes no sense. So that's where I think the translation is wrong. And I can check that just to make sure. Yeah, it says, if the blue die shows the face, he has to search the cauldron behind the witch. Okay, that's, okay, if it shows behind the witch. Uh, and then, if the die shows the witch's hat, it's the cauldron in front of him. And so I don't think it's supposed to be behind the witch. I think it's supposed to be what's behind him. So if you see the blue face, it's what's behind him. If you see the yellow hat, it's what's in front of him. Uh, you could play what's behind the witch, but then that makes no sense why you're moving him, because the only thing they have to do is concentrate on the blue die. Of what's going to happen at that point. So I think that's where the translation is wrong. So it should be what's behind him. And he doesn't look for what's missing. Every disc has two of the same objects. So this one has two socks. And so he's going to find the two socks on that one. So let's say we roll all these dice. Okay, so we get a one and we have the moon. So that's Fex and then the hat. And so we do a little saying. Uh, we cover it up. So we're going to go one and we're going to do what's in front of him because he has a yellow hat and what's him and we're going to move in this direction so then we're going to look at this disc and then we're going to see two teeth two dentures and then you say two dentures after and then you'll move and say okay yes it is the two dentures so then the person would get the potion he does add a level of difficulty that if kids haven't completely mastered the other three dice yet, that you want to wait for him. So normally when kids are like, well, let's play with him, I say, no, 
Let's not. Let's see where you're at, and then this will be the reward. If you can get to this far, and then we can play, then they're ready. So, so one thing I really like about the Haba games is the material that they use. They actually use wooden dice that I have engraved and painted, uh, wooden characters, as you can see from all the other videos I've done so far. Uh, and then the stock that they use for the cardboard is great. I mean, all these little chits and stuff are just excellent quality. Uh, definitely know what they're doing. Uh, the fact that this game is actually designed for cognitive functioning uh, and the applicability of, of all the Hoppa games uh, on the learning aspect, uh, just great, great quality. And so let's take it back up top and give our final thoughts. Speak. I've used this game to help kids that didn't get a chance to develop their linguistic skills and cannot uh, enunciate very well. And so I've had them recite all the different pictures and re-recite re, uh, that to practice speaking. And then you're obviously uh, hiding the dice so the kids have to remember what they see. And then the impulse control, the motion control is when they cannot touch stuff. You really have to coach them to do that. And so it brings up that level of cognitive function that uh, can set them up for greater skills later. And so that's one thing I like about this game. You can follow the link below and pick up this game from Amazon. Uh, I definitely recommend this if, you're, if you have a family, if you have kids that are slow cognitively, if you work in the mental health field, this is a game that you need to have on your shelf. Thanks again, and see you guys later.